everyone, my name is Jamie and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's video is going to be a tutorial or walkthrough of my pretzel pullover pattern, which is this beautiful jumper that I'm wearing right now. This is a video that will go along with the written pattern, so you can purchase that on my website, my Ravelry or my Etsy. The pattern has just released and because it's slightly less beginner friendly, um, just in terms of the cable stitches and a few other techniques involved, I decided that having a video walkthrough would be helpful to go along with the pattern, especially if you are more of a beginner knitter, but want to have a go at knitting this piece. Bear with me, this is my first full tutorial for a pattern, so I'm hoping I filmed everything that was needed to be filmed and covered everything when I was making this second version. Um, I had already made one before I wrote the pattern in a size small. This one is in a size medium. Um, I'll show you the other one. So this was the first sample and it was in a size small. This one is a size medium. It's just slightly longer and slightly wider. I had yarn lying around and I had a few, I think I had like one extra skein. So I was like, let me make a medium for the second sample. And I made this following the actual pattern, like following the charts. So first I'm gonna talk you through what you will need to knit this pattern. And then we will go through all the steps. I also just wanna flag that I'm not like a knitting expert and I'm not like a, I'm not the best teacher. <laughs> I try my best to explain things, but if you're having trouble following a specific technique that I show, there's definitely a more clear and concise video out there on YouTube covering just that technique. I also have linked a few tutorials throughout the pattern uh, made by other people on specific techniques. So please feel free to refer to those as well if you're uh, struggling to follow. This is just gonna be a basic walkthrough um, and I might not go through every single little detail, but I will do my best to cover the basics. So this pattern is knitted in super chunky yarn. I made both samples using Malabrigo Rasta. This one is in the shade Sunset. The other one is in the shade Cucumber. I find this is a great yarn for this pattern because it's slightly less chunky than say a wool in the gang crazy sexy wool which is 200 grams for 80 meters whereas this yarn is 150 grams for 80 meters so you don't get as stiff of a piece or as heavy of a piece you end up with something a little bit more lightweight still super super warm and as you can see it's not like there's holes in it or anything it's still super chunky and this yarn is just so luxe and it's not cheap but it is worth every cent I am obsessed with it it's just so it is a joy to knit an absolute joy to knit and just as much of a joy to wear so that's the recommended yarn I have a bunch of other yarns recommended in the pattern keep in mind these vary between the weights but they're all suitable the listed number of skeins needed are based on this yarn which is the 150 grams to 80 82 meters actually. So just keep that in mind when selecting which yarn you're going to use because you may need to use more skeins or less skeins than it is listed based on how much yarn comes in one skein of the yarn that you're using. Hope that makes sense. You'll also need 15 millimeter needles and 12 millimeter needles and those will both need to be circular needles because you'll be knitting in the round for the sleeves and the neck trim. I recommend using a 60 centimeter cable, but you may need to use the magic loop method as well, which I do show in this video. The front and back panels are knit flat and then seamed, but yeah, the sleeves and the neck trim are knit in the round. So you will still need circular needles. If you really like using flat needles, you can use those for the front and back panels, but you'll still need circulars for the sleeves and neck trim. So yeah. <laughs> Before you begin, please knit a gauge swatch. The gauge is listed in stocking net because obviously there's a lot going on in this pattern, but if you can get the stocking net gauge, then that's the most important thing. So that gauge is eight stitches and 10 rows. So what you'll need to do is just cast on maybe 10 to 12 stitches just to be safe and knit in stocking net for at least 10 rows and then just measure to make sure that you have the right gauge. And if your gauge is wrong, let's say you have six stitches and 
eight rows, for example, then that means your gauge is too loose. So that means you'll need to use smaller needles to hopefully achieve the gauge. And the other way around, if you have too many stitches or rows, then you'll need to size up in your needles to loosen your gauge. So once you've done your gauge swatch and you know you've matched gauge, you are ready to cast on. When selecting which size you're going to knit, all you need to do is take a measuring tape. Obviously, not, not don't wear something as bulky as this, but wrap the measuring tape around your bust and make sure you're wrapping it around the widest, fullest part of your bust. Check what the measurements are and then you'll see in the pattern that each size says to fit bust and then it gives you a few measurements for each size. It'll tell you the finished measurements, the width and the length of the corresponding size. So my bust is approximately 90 centimeters and that is kind of in between the small and the medium, hence why both fit me. They just fit me a little bit differently. Um, I generally tend towards a small, but also, yeah, it really just depends on the fit that you want. So if you're wanting a more oversized fit, then you would go size up. If you want something a bit more fitted, I would size down and it's really up to you, but you can see what the finished measurements will be. So yeah, you can make that decision based on the fit that you want. Okay, first things first, we're going to be casting on. So using 12 millimeter needles, you'll need to cast on the number of stitches that is written for your size in the pattern using an alternating cable cast on. So this cast on method is not compulsory. It does give you a great clean edge. I'll just show you on this one, you can see that you can't even like see the cast on it. It's like completely invisible. I think this looks super, super clean and nice. And it's not that difficult once you've figured it out. But if you would like to use another cast on method, the long tail cast on works as well. All right, so to start our cast on, we are gonna do a slip knot, which is gonna act as our first stitch. And once we have the slip knot, we just place it onto the left needle and we're ready to start the cast on. So we insert the right needle into the first stitch knitwise, yarn over, pull through, twist, and then place onto the left needle. So now things are gonna change a little bit. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the right needle from the back to the front and insert it in between the first two stitches, yarn over, pull through, oh, it fell off the needle, pull through, twist again, and place it on the left needle and pull. Now we're going to go from front to back in between those two stitches, insert it in between and get the working yarn, yarn over, pull through and twist and place it onto the left needle. And now we're going to go from back to front and yarn over, pull through those two stitches, twist and place it onto the left needle. So we're really just going to be repeating these two cast on methods over and over again. So until you have all your stitches, just keep doing this. So once you've casted on all your stitches, you'll be working six rows of one by one ribbing, which just means to knit one and then purl one and repeat that all the way through. So once you have all your cast on stitches, you'll be able to see that the stitches look different for the knits and the purl. So you are going to be starting with a knit one. So it's pretty easy to remember, but the knit stitches are the ones that kind of poke out a little bit more. I'll just pointing to them here. And then the purl stitches are kind of a bit hidden behind. So we're going to start with a knit stitch. So we just knit one as usual, bring the yarn forward and then purl the next stitch. And we're just going to repeat that over and over again. And you'll start to see how the invisible cast on really works because you just can't see the cast on at all. And the stitches look super, super clean and nice. So we're just gonna keep doing this over and over again throughout the whole row and for the next six rows. I also just wanna flag that I do knit continental style. So I hold the yarn in my left hand. If you don't knit that way, if you knit English style or any other style, don't get confused. Um, just knit however you prefer to knit, but this is, this is how I knit and it looks the same, so don't worry. And 
yeah, I also do Norwegian pearling sometimes, as you can see here, because I find it a bit easier. Once you have worked all six rows, you'll need to switch to your 15 millimeter needles. So now you'll be following the charts for your size for the back panel. When you download the pattern, you'll see that you have two files. One is the written PDF and the other has all the charts in it for each size. So open up your chart. I would recommend printing it out if you prefer to mark things off, you know, using pen or highlighter or whatever it is. Um, I personally choose violence and very rarely print out my charts. I didn't print out my chart for this sample and I was okay because I kind of just <laughs> kept a mental note of what where I was up to, but there's probably a bit more work than is necessary. So you can just print it out and it'll probably be a bit easier. So when following the charts, you'll see that there is a key with a bunch of different symbols for each stitch. So that will help you to know what stitch is what, especially for your cables. And it's important to note that your right side rows, which are your odd number rows, we read from right to left and your wrong side rows, which are your even numbers, will be read from left to right. So I'm just starting on my first row of the chart. As you can see, I've got my 15 millimeter needles and I just wanted to show you what I do to make things a little bit easier when I get to the wrong side row is I'm adding a stitch marker once I get to the slip stitch slash moss stitch part of the pattern which is on either side of the cable design and this isn't super necessary but it's more just because when you're working the wrong side rows you are working pretty much every single stitch just as they appear except for in these sections and if you're just like mindlessly knitting you might forget to slip those stitches or to do the moss stitch so that's just a little mental note for me putting the stitch markers there so we're now going to be doing our first cable and I'm going to show you this in three different ways. This is a cable for back. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our cable needle, which is just a spare pair of needles, slip two stitches and hold it at the back of the work. Now we're going to knit the next two stitches as normal. And then we're going to take the cable needle and use it to place those two stitches back onto the left needle. And then we're going to knit those two stitches as normal. So as you can see, that creates a right leaning cable. And that's just one way to do it. I prefer this next method that I'm going to show just personally, but it really just depends on your personal preference. So the next way that I do it is I just use my finger instead of a needle. I use my finger as a cable needle. Everything I'm doing is exactly the same, except I'm just holding those stitches with my finger. I just find it a bit quicker and less clunky. Um, but I am also quite experienced with cables. So if this is your first time, I probably wouldn't recommend doing that, but it is worth a try because maybe you will enjoy it more. And then this last method is one that I don't normally use, but it is quite common and it's quite similar to the first one, except I'll just show you how it's different. So what we're going to do is take the cable needle and slip two stitches, except we're going to pull the cord all the way through and then knit the next two stitches eventually and then we're gonna pull the stitches from the cable needle right to the end oh not all the way off and then knit them off the cable needle instead of putting them onto our left needle so it's pretty similar but it's a slight difference and yeah it's totally up to your personal preference the cables all look the same so it's really just up to you and which one you prefer doing so we've moved to row two, which is the first wrong side row. And I just wanted to quickly show you what I was talking about before and why the markers are helpful. So after I've slipped the marker, I'm going to slip this next stitch. So I bring the yarn forward and slip the stitch purlwise. And then we work the next stitch in moss stitch. So that was a knit. So now we do a purl and then a knit. And then I'm going to slip this next stitch pearlwise again with the yarn held in front. So for your size, you might need to do more moss stitches in between the two slip stitches, depending on your size. But yeah, I just wanted to show you how to do those slip stitches. It's very easy. And then I'll show you um, what it looks like on the other side and why we do it. Okay, so now we're on to row three and I've reached the slip stitch and I'm just gonna knit it as it says to do in the pattern. 
and I'll just show you now what those stitches actually look like once you've knit them. So you can see they've kind of elongated and that creates this really cool texture. So on row three, we have quite a lot of cable stitches to work, a lot of different ones. So I'm gonna show you them all. So this first one is a CR3B, which is a three stitch cable. Our first stitch is a purl. So we're going to slip that and hold it at the back of our work, just one stitch. And then we're going to knit the next two stitches as normal. And then we're gonna take that stitch that we held I'm going to place it back onto the needle and purl that stitch because it's a purl stitch. So that creates a three stitch right leaning cable. We're now going to be working a CL4F, which is a left leaning cable. We're going to take the next two stitches, place them on hold and hold them at the front of our work. The next two stitches are a purl. So we're going to purl those two stitches and then place the stitches that we held on the cable needle back onto the left needle. And because those are knit stitches, we are going to knit those two stitches. So I think you can see a little pattern forming here. We're always working the stitches as they appear, but it just depends on what cable we're doing as to how we cable them. Okay, we're now going to be working a CR4B, which is a right leaning cable. We slip the first two stitches onto the cable needle, hold at the back of the work, and we knit the next two stitches. Then we take those stitches that we held, place them back on the left needle, and because they are purl stitches, we will be purling those two stitches. We're now going to be working a CL3F, which is a three stitch cable, a left leaning one. So we take our first two knit stitches, hold them at the front of our work, purl one stitch, and then place those stitches back on the left needle and knit those two stitches. It's basically the opposite of the other three stitch cable we did. And I quickly just wanted to show you how on row five, the last cable stitch that I haven't shown yet is a cable for front. It's very easy. We place two stitches at the front of the work and we knit the next two stitches. We then place those stitches back on the left needle and because they are knit stitches, we just knit those two. So it's very similar to the cable for back. It's literally just the other way round. Okay, so the pattern will tell you that you are ready to shape the neckline when you reach a certain row. So once you reach that row, you are gonna start the shoulder shaping. You're gonna be working a bunch of stitches, then binding off a bunch of stitches in the middle, and then working the rest of the stitches. So that is gonna separate your right and left shoulders, and you'll have your bound off stitches in the middle, which will be for your neckline. All right, so as you can see, I'm just working across the row as written in the chart. Just keep following the charts up until you get until the point where you need to start binding off stitches for the middle. So as you can see here, I have all my right shoulder stitches and now I'm gonna start binding off. So you're just working the stitches in pattern. So seeing how they appear. So if they are a pearl, you bind them off purl wise and if it's a knit stitch you bind it off knit wise so these ones I've all done purl wise and I think we have a knit stitch next yep so we knit that stitch and then we bind off and we just keep doing this until we've bound off the right amount of stitches for your size and then you just keep working the left shoulder stitches as per the chart and we just work until the end of the row at which point you should be able to see both shoulders and the neckline starting to appear. And so now we're ready to do the shaping. So you'll be working your left shoulder first because you've worked the right stitches, bound off the middle stitches and then work the left stitches. So you're gonna be starting with the left shoulder. So we're just gonna work a wrong side row for the left shoulder. Basically the same way we've worked every wrong side row. And then once we get to the end of the row, we're gonna be doing a decrease. So the last two stitches are gonna be decreased. And the way that you decrease will depend on your size. So I'm not gonna go into depth on how I'm doing my decrease because it is different for all the sizes. So that wouldn't really be fair. But there are tutorials linked in the pattern for all the decrease methods. 
I'm doing an SSP here. So you can see I'm decreasing these last two stitches. And then we're going to just turn our work and then we'll have one more row to knit and we just follow the charts to work all of these stitches. Once you have finished the left shoulder, you're going to place these stitches on hold on either a stitch holder or on a scrap piece of yarn. Or you can do what I do in this video, which is I just use a spare pair of needles. So I'm literally just slipping all the stitches. You don't even need the stitch marker. Yeah. <laughs> um, just slipping all the stitches onto a spare needle. A circular needle works well for this because you can just use the cord as a stitch holder. So once we have all those stitches on hold, we just cut the yarn, leaving a decent tail and set those stitches aside. And now we're ready to work the right shoulder. The right shoulders worked very similarly, except we're just gonna attach our yarn on the wrong side of the work and then work our first decrease and then work all the way across the row on a wrong side row. And then once we finish that row, we're going to turn our work again, work one last row as the pattern says, and then we're gonna leave those stitches on hold the same way we did for the other shoulder. And then once again, cut the yarn and you have finished your back panel. Okay, so the front panel is very, very similar to the back panel in the sense that everything you did for the back panel, you're gonna repeat right up until you get until the row that it says on the pattern, which will be a few rows earlier than you did for the back panel because you're gonna be doing a few extra rows of shaping for the front. So as you did for the back panel, you're gonna be working a bunch of stitches then binding off the middle stitches as they appear and then working the rest of the stitches. And you will then be starting once again with the left as worn shoulder. So when your panel is facing you, when the right side of your panel is facing you because it's the front panel, then the shoulder that will be on your right when you're looking at it is actually the left shoulder because if you turn it around and face and put it on you, this is the left shoulder, right? And if I was to turn this around and face it to me, it would look, it would be on the right. So when it says left as worn or right as worn, that's what it means. So don't get confused, but yeah, you'll be starting off with the left as worn shoulder, work that as per the charts, leave the stitches on hold and cut the yarn and then reattach to work the right as worn shoulder. Once you have done the right shoulder, don't cut the yarn and you don't have to put the stitches on hold because we're gonna do the three needle bind off now. You can leave these stitches, stitches on your needle and the yarn attached because you are gonna use this yarn for the bind off. The three needle bind off is a great method for seaming shoulders. It is a bit annoying to leave your stitches on hold, but it's so worth it because you end up with a really, really clean and not very clunky, I guess, shoulder seam. And I find that especially, especially for super chunky knits. I find for super chunky knits when you do use a horizontal mattress stitch, it is fine, but the seam underneath is a lot bulkier, which is a little bit less comfortable. So yeah, I just prefer using three needle bind off and that's what we're gonna be doing. It's really not that difficult and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. And also there is a tutorial linked in the pattern if you want someone else explaining it to you that might explain it a bit better. Okay, so to work our three needle bind off, we need to take both panels. So we've already got stitches on the needle for the front panel. We need to take our back panel and place the right sides facing each other. So your wrong sides facing you. And the corresponding stitches for the shoulder that you are gonna be binding off need to be placed on another 15 millimeter needle. And make sure both needles are facing in the same direction, very important. What you're gonna need is a third needle. So this can be another 15 millimeter needle. It can also be maybe a 12 millimeter needle that works as well. Whatever you have lying around, obviously not too small, but the same size or a little bit smaller is fine. And we're gonna be using that to bind off. So we're gonna take our third needle and insert it into both first stitches knit wise yarn over and pull through both stitches. So we're basically knitting those two stitches together. Then we're going to do the same thing on the next stitch. So now we have two stitches on our right needle. We're going to take usually the back needle 
and bind off one stitch. And now we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to knit those two stitches together from both needles and then bind off another stitch. So this is very repetitive now. We're just gonna be doing the same thing. So knitting those two stitches on each needle together, bind off one stitch and we just repeat that all the way through until we have bound off all of the shoulder stitches. And then we're just going to bind off that last stitch and fasten off and cut the yarn and then do the same on the other shoulder. So you'll just need to put the stitches that you've left on hold onto some 15 millimeter needles and work it exactly the same way. And you'll have a beautiful seam. Once you've bound off both shoulders, now we're going to be doing the neck trim. Make sure that your right sides are now facing outwards. So that means your shoulder seams will be invisible. So they'll be on the inside of your work and you have your right sides is the side you want everyone to see facing outwards so with the back panel facing you and using 12 millimeter needles you're going to be picking up stitches around the neckline the pattern will tell you how many stitches to pick up for your size you're going to be starting with the right side of the back neck moving across and picking up the stitches that you bound off in the middle of the back neck and then working up the left side of the back neck then you'll work your way down the left side of the front neck, picking up the stitches across the stitches that you bound off and picking up the stitches on the right side of the front neck. So at this point, you should have a full circle of stitches and now is the time to place a marker to mark the beginning of the round. This will be our first time working in the round for this pattern. So since you might not have that many stitches on your needles and your cord might be a bit too long, you'll use the magic loop method, which I will show you. So I'm using the magic loop method, which basically just means to pull the cord between two stitches about halfway through, and that will make it easier to knit in the round. Now I'm gonna place my stitch marker and we're ready to start knitting. So we just knit one, purl one all the way across. And once I get to the end of the first half of my stitches, once I reach the point where I pulled the cord through, I will show you what to do next. So I have now reached the end of those stitches and I'm just going to turn my work around a bit and just find another point where to pull the cord through about halfway, push those stitches back up the needle and continue knitting in the round. It's so easy. So we're going to work four rounds of one by one ribbing. If you want to add more rows here, you're more than welcome to. Just know that that might make your neckline a little bit tighter. Yeah, you could turn it into a turtleneck if you wanted to add like quite a few more rows and then fold it over. It's really up to you. Once you've done as many rows of ribbing as you'd like, bind off all your stitches loosely in one by one ribbing patterns. So you may wanna use a stretchy bind off or you may wanna use 15 millimeter needles to bind off. I personally use 12 millimeter needles and just bind off Normally, I just make sure not to be too tight about it and I don't have a problem getting my head through the neck hole, but it really depends on your tension. Um, my tension can be quite loose, so I don't really have a problem with that. But if you have a problem, if you have trouble with knitting loosely, then maybe size up your needles and that should work and you should have no problem getting your head through the neck hole. When you get to your last stitch, you're just going to insert the needle into the first stitch, bind off and fasten off. Cut the yarn and you'll see you have a beautiful neckline all finished, beautiful neck trim. Okay, so it's time to seam up the sides, which is exciting because we're almost ready to properly try on our body. For the side seams, you're gonna be using the vertical mattress stitch, but for reverse stockinette, which is pretty similar to the normal mattress stitch, but it'll just look a little bit different in how you identify your stitches. And we're gonna be seaming the side panels up to then create the armholes. So as you can see, I've got my work laid in front of me. Grab a measuring tape and the pattern will say exactly how much to measure, but we're gonna just go from the shoulder downwards on the very edge and we're gonna place an interlocking stitch marker at the point in which the pattern says, so whichever centimeters you need to do. And that's just gonna mark where we need to seam up to. So that's gonna mark where the armhole is gonna begin. And make sure to do this for the other side as well. So we're gonna get a long tail of yarn and use a darning needle to work our seams. 
And if you've never done mattress stitch before, I would recommend watching a better tutorial than this. I'm not the best at explaining these things. Um, there is a tutorial linked in the pattern. But we're basically just going to be picking up the little bumps on either side to create an invisible seam. So you can see I've pulled apart the first two stitches and I'm sticking my needle in the first bump. And then I'm pulling apart the first stitch on the other panel and inserting my needle under the first bump. Then you find the next bump on top of that. You basically just want to be working in one straight line and inserting your needle into each bump and just keep going all the way along. It's a bit hard on the ribbing just because of the way the stitches are worked, but it's a lot easier once you get to past the ribbing and you get to the reverse stockinette. So you can see here, those are the little bumps that we want to be working in. They're right near the very edge and we just keep going basically. Sorry, this is not a good explanation. Hopefully what I'm doing is helping more than what I'm saying. But yeah, we're just going to keep seaming all the way up until we get to our stitch marker. Also just note that my yarn tail was definitely not long enough. Um, I definitely had to add a new tail halfway through so don't recommend doing that but yeah just so you're aware this is definitely not enough yarn to seam all the way up but you can start to see the invisible seam well you can't see it <laughs> that's what makes it invisible but yeah you can just see now I'm almost finished just doing the last few stitches because I've almost reached the stitch marker and we have a beautiful invisible seam you literally can't even tell that it's there, it looks seamless, which is the point. <laughs> and you can also see we now have an armhole. Okay, so at this point, it is definitely a great idea to try on your jumper with what you have so far, because you'll be able to put your arms through the armholes and really see how it fits with the neckline and with the side seams all done. And this will give you a good indication of how your jumper is going to fit. So now it's time to work the sleeves. So we're going to be switching back to our 15 millimeter needles and we're going to be picking up stitches around the armhole to create the sleeves. So you'll be starting at the underarm point, which is just here and working your way up and around. When you're picking up stitches, make sure that they are evenly spaced and the pattern will tell you how many stitches you need to pick up for the side and which stitch needs to be on the very top of the shoulder seam because that stitch is going to be the middle of the cables. So that's gonna ensure that your cable sits at the right part of your arm and isn't like randomly like underneath or something so just be conscious and just count how many stitches you've done and make sure that the correct stitch is right at the top in the middle so when you're picking up your stitches around the armhole you want to evenly space them out so what i like to do is i do four stitches and then i skip the next stitch and then i pick up another four stitches so three four and then i'm skipping the next stitch as you can see so skip that and yeah then continue pick up one two three four and then when you get to the top you can see that is our middle stitch once you've picked up all your stitches place a marker to mark the beginning of the round and now we're ready to work the sleeves so the sleeve has a beautiful cable design that is very easy to work and very repetitive um, a lot more repetitive than the front and back panels. There is a bit of purling because we're working in the round in reverse stockinette, so I am sorry, but it's totally worth it. So we're just gonna be repeating two rows over and over again until your sleeve measures the appropriate measurements, but you also are more than welcome to do more or less if you would like depending on your desired length. Everyone's arm lengths are very different, so definitely try it on. Keep in mind that your cuff is gonna add approximately six to seven centimeters or two to two and a half inches. Um, so that is important to keep in mind. So every second row of your sleeves is gonna have cables. So just make sure you keep track of which row you're on. Are you on a cable row or a non-cable row? So your first round is going to be purling as many stitches as the pattern tells you to until you 
get to the knit stitches so I'm just doing the magic loop here just to get further along in the round but yeah so you just purl as many stitches as the pattern says for your size and then we're going to here set up our cables so we've got four knit stitches and then you'll see that middle stitch on the shoulder seam is going to be a purl stitch and then we're going to do four more knit stitches these are going to set up our cables and then you just purl the rest of the round on the next round when you get to those knit stitches we're going to do the cables so i'm doing a cable for back first which you can just see i'm holding the stitches on my finger behind my work and place them back on the needle and then we knit those stitches <laughs> and then in between this cable and the next one we're going to purl that stitch again and now we're going to do a cable for front so you can see I'm holding the stitches at the front of my work and this is going to be the same for every cable row so every other row is just purling the pearls and knitting the knits and the every other row is the cable row. Once you've finished knitting the cables, you're going to make decreases for the cuff. So this is what your sleeve will look like when you get to that point. You can see all the cables worked up, looks so nice. Um, this is one of my favorite cable stitch patterns ever. I just think it looks so, so pretty. So we're gonna do our decreases now. And depending on your size, the way you decrease will be a little bit different, but you're going to be mostly just doing pearls two together all the way across. When you get to the cable stitches, you will also have to do some knit two togethers. That's all written in the pattern exactly how those should be spaced out. But yeah, you can just see by purling two or knitting two together, we are going to be pretty much halving the number of stitches that we have except our final stitch will be a purl stitch because otherwise you'll have an odd number of stitches which won't make sense for one by one ribbing so you can see here I was just knitting two together and then we're going back to purling two together so it'll depend on your size but yeah just follow the pattern to make sure that you place those decreases correctly and I'll see you once we're ready to do the cuff. Once you've done the decreases, you will have a certain amount of stitches written in the pattern and it's time to knit the cuffs and for the cuffs we'll be using 12 millimeter needles. So you'll need to switch needle sizes. You'll definitely need to use the magic loop method for this section because we're going to be knitting tiny little <laughs> sleeve cups, sleeve cups, sleeve cuffs. So we're going to be working seven or more rounds of ribbing. So you can see I've got my 12 millimeter needles and we're just gonna work the rounds of ribbing using the 12 millimeter needles. So knit one, purl one, knit one, and then we have to just pull the stitches through because we're using magic loop. Now we have like very few stitches. So that's why I'm doing that. And we're going purl, knit, purl, etc., all the way around for seven rounds and once you've done seven rounds of one by one ribbing once again we're going to bind off the stitches loosely in pattern and yeah for me i find that just binding them off using a regular cast off is okay i don't find that i need to use a stretchy cast off but once again up to you and if you prefer um, a stretchier sleeve cuff you can definitely use a stretchy or tubular bind off. So we've now done one sleeve and now we're going to repeat all that again for the second sleeve. Okay, you are almost almost done. I promise the last and least fun step is to weave in all your ends. Once you have done that, you are finished your jumper and it looks so good. If you want to block your piece, you are welcome to. I don't personally feel like it's super necessary with ch super chunky knits and takes forever to dry. So I am not the kind of person who's gonna do that. But if you prefer to, or if you want to make it a little bit bigger or just change the measurements in some way, if you're not entirely happy with how the fit is, blocking is definitely a good idea, but definitely not entirely necessary for everyone. Yeah, I hope this video is helpful. 
if you made this jumper feel free to tag me on instagram send me your photos i would love to see what you made let me know if you want to see more tutorials for other patterns because i'm more than happy to do it i just need to think about it ahead of time before i make my piece because i tend to just forget to do these kind of things and then i'm like oh for this one i was lucky because i was making a second one but yeah let me know if you want to see more tutorials for my patterns and We'll see, maybe maybe this will be the first of many. Thank you so much for watching and subscribe to see more videos from me. And until then, I guess I will just see you in the next one. Bye.